deadly machete attack at a Spanish church labeled jihadist attack. On January 25th, Spanish authorities arrested a 25-year-old Moroccan man, Yassin Kanja, after two Catholic churches in Agresias, Spain, were attacked. The, sp the suspect is accused of killing a sexton, Diego Valencia, and injuring a priest, Antonio Rodriguez, with a machete. The Spanish Interior Ministry is keeping Kanja in custody. The judge investigating the incident suggested that the attacks were connected to Salafi jihadism. According to the reports, the assailant went inside Maria uh, uh, um, Auxiliadora y San Isidro Church at 7 p.m. and attacked a priest who was severely injured. After the first assault, the suspect went to Nuestra Señora de la Palma Church, five minutes from San Isidro, where he murdered a sexton. Local media also reported that three other people were injured in the attacks. Leaders of the Conservative People's Party, or PP, and the far-right Vox Party have been criticized for using the attack to smear and stigmatize the Muslim community in Spain. Albert, um, Alberto uh, Nuñez Fiejo, the People's Party leader, said that, quote, there are people who kill in the name of God or in the name of religion, arguing that Christians were no longer killing people in the name of religion. No longer being the key, key phrase here, which means they used to. Um, yes. So, wait, was this, sorry, I was looking at the live chat. Was this done, was the motivation Islam or was it something else? So, based on the information that has been released to the public so far, um, this, the high court has said that they believe that this is my, the gossip is saying fantastic Spanish accent. It, it, it's a little botched, but thank you. Uh, <laughs> um, the, this attack was influenced to some degree by Islamic extremism. Um, they, the authorities have said that this man seems to have gone through a period of like, quote unquote, rapid self radicalization. And his friends reported that he used to just kind of like live a normal life. And then all of a sudden they noticed that he was acting very different, like a month before the attack or six weeks. And he started like listening to the Quran on his phone all the time. And um, so far, the authorities are saying that that is a motivation or factor in this case. Because he was also like had comments about another Moroccan man that he knew who I think was maybe an ex-Muslim Christian convert, possibly, because he was calling that man an infidel and stuff. And um, so, yeah, so far the authorities are saying that that is a motivation. Interesting. Um, okay, let me just, um, just to be clear, guys, um, even though Islam is to be blamed, probably somewhat here, there is nothing in Islam that directly allows this. Especially because they're Christian, they're Ahlul Kitab. I mean, it depends on your interpretation, but there are, I mean, you're, su you're supposed to live according to the laws when you're living in a non-Islamic country as much as you can, unless it violates uh, something that you're supposed to do. For example, if you're forced to eat pig or drink alcohol, or if you're forced not to pray, then you should disobey. But other than that, um, this is not... The, you know, this is not the teaching of Islam, these, these actions. However, Islam is still to be blamed. Again, there are many things that are not directly endorsed by the religion, but indirectly the religion causes. The example I give is in Christianity, for example, there is no, there's nothing in the Bible, last time I checked, that tells you to go molest children. It doesn't say that, Okay. Uh, but again, I think the Christian attitudes over trusting author religious authority and its views, uh, its attitude towards sex and chastity and puritanism and all of that all has contributed in, to environments where children are more likely to be abused. Right? So again, there's no direct teaching of it in Christianity, but Christianity is responsible for it. So in Islam, it's the same thing. There are certain attitudes that are... Um, increases because of Islamic teachings, even though Islam does not directly teach it. So just wanted to clarify that because I need to be 
We need to be transparent yeah. about it. Yeah. I want to read you some of the statements from these government officials that caused a huge controversy in Spain and just give me a reaction. So, um, uh, uh, Fiojo is saying, quote, there are people who kill in the name of God or in the name of religion. Um, saying, however, it's been many centuries since we've seen a Catholic or a Christian killing in the name of their religion or in their beliefs. But there are other peoples who have citizens who do that. Um, and he tried to clarify his statement saying that uh, he insisted that no religion should be stigmatized. However, he later stated that there isn't any problem with Catholic terrorism in general and insisted that Islamic fundamentalism is a problem worldwide. Um, then there was a, the leader of the Vox party expressed his condolences to the victims and blamed illegal immigrants and the government for opening up Spain's borders and giving away subsidies. Quote, some open the doors to them, others pay for them, and it's the people who suffer. We can't tolerate the spread of Islamism on our soil. Okay, so people are having an issue with what I said, but you're all wrong and I'm correct. Um, young atheists saying Islam allows killing of non-Muslims, not all the time. It only allows you to do that in certain conditions. Especially doesn't let you do that if you are living on, in non-Muslim land. It does not allow you to go willy-nilly on, on every non-Muslim and just kill them. It does not do that. So that is wrong. Again, I am anti-Islam, but we need to be fair with what Islam teaches when we are anti-Islam. Zagros is saying, isn't it actionable for a Muslim to do this if one believes that they are in the last days? Um well, Zagros, even if that's true, we have specific, specific instructions that nobody can tell when it's, when it's the last days. You know, so unless you see the Mahdi back right now speaking and the sky literally falling, <laughs> so there's no way you cannot announce that you know that it's the last days. So, so yeah, that's not happening. Um, Sasan is saying, Arment, don't confuse exegesis of the Quranic is what is i don't know what this is exegesis of the eisegesis i don't know what this is you can de you can dehumanize anyone and use the ex exegesis of, thing, of the quran to kill people no not really it does not um the killings are done are allowed under war conditions when you are directly in in war with people again it does the dehumanization is correct the Quran does dehumanizations of Jews and Christians specifically, um, but it does not allow you to go just kill them anytime you want. It does not do that. That's for inside. That's for during war. So that is wrong. Um, also, Mariam, I don't know if it's, this is response to me that I'm saying this. Mariam is saying, well, the Turks destroyed thousands of churches and monasteries when they committed genocide against the Armenians and the other, the other Christians. Okay, guys, we need to, I don't know if this is in response to what I said, but if it is, you have to separate what Muslims do and what Islam teaches are not necessarily the same thing. So yes, we have many things that, have, uh, that you know, Muslims have done and Christians have done. Well, we have to, if we want to criticize actions done by specific Muslims, that's a separate thing from us criticizing Islam. Again, I keep saying this as an anti-Islam person, okay? I'm against religion, I'm against Islam, I'm against Christianity. I just want to make sure we're being fair with our criticism, okay? Um, yes. Wait, who's saying this? Somebody's saying one-eyed... When I, a heathen is saying, oh, I didn't know that. I just thought extremist Muslims just thought it was okay to kill anyone. Yeah, but the, what you call extremist Muslims, you know, that, that it doesn't mean, the, so, yeah, extremist Muslims, a lot of them do agree that you could just, like, if you see a non-Muslim, go just and do whatever you want with them. But, um, again, that's, the, um, that's what they think. But, again, I criticize the scripture based on what the scripture teaches, not necessarily what the extremist Muslims do. Um, many things that uh, uh, many actions taken by extremist Muslims are endorsed by the by the Quran and Hadith, and many things that they do um, is not. But the thing, but the thing is that the Quran and Hadith has enough vile and disgusting teachings in it for us to be able to use it to say that Islam is vile and disgusting. We don't need to add more to it. You know, there's enough crap in there for me to be like this is this is a violent barbaric 
um, ideology, backwards ideology, okay? I don't need to make up new things again about Islam to be able to attack it. <clears throat> These comments, I, I love it. Because <laughs> people are like, oh, okay, good point. I understand, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> One eyed Ethan is. Armin is the master moderator over here. He's defending <laughs> all the nuance. <laughs> hey, secularity also likes what I'm saying. Yeah. The defender uh, of the nuance. That's funny. <laughs> Get my best-selling book, Why There Is No God, for free. Click on the link for it in the description.